Alright, I suppose one last precaution. The hydrogen bubbles that build up on the surface are explosive. They make a hell of a bang when they go off and they'll cover your walls with brown sludge like that. So uh, avoid smoking, welding or grinding nearby. Always use it in a well ventilated area. Don't l allow the hydrogen to build up to a dangerous level indoors. In an open or well ventilated garage like this where you've got gaps all the way around, it's fine. But if you try and do it inside a sealed room, you're going to end up with a hydrogen problem. And it will literally blow a room apart if it's too much. Oh, thanks for watching, folks. Good day, folks. Basically, while I uh, wait for some paint to dry, I figure I'll work on the electrolysis filtration system. I still haven't got a permanent pump set up for it. So I'm just flaring out the drain or discharge pipe for it. And I made up a little mount for the pipe, or well the pump, in there. The tank's still in operation, I've still got the uh, motor end housing in there. It's cleaning up nicely. So I've got the pump mounted in permanently. This is the same one I used for my early Morris 1100 test. I'm going to run this out. I don't know whether I'll have a maybe a copper right angle coming through here and straight in or whether I actually just bend this pipe out and tap into it somewhere around there just angle this rubber pipe it would be nice to have it all in copper but obviously underneath I need something that's a bit more corrosion resistant and the rubber hose does that job but I, what I've got to do is attach onto here which is the inlet for the filter canister with a stainless steel filter running along the inside going through to the discharge on the inside and then out through this cooling coil cooling fans back out into the tank the most important thing is the check valve when this system shuts down I don't want water flooding from inside here back into the tank and overfilling it at the moment the tank's a bit low but I want it to stay at this sort of level while the pump's running and while this cylinder is full of water and that means there's all that water in there if the pump shuts off all that water is going to flood back into here and overfill the tank so I'm going to put a check valve down the bottom here and hopefully that will minimise or prevent any backflow and that's the check valve here that's why I'm putting a uh, flare fitting on like so, screw that in and cut this pipe off and solder it into the bottom of that filter canister I don't even have a proper flare tool, I'm using my uh, homemade pipe sander for the lathe and just tapping it in I've annealed the copper tube and softened it up with the torch and it's fairly close flare compared with what I need I'll bring that collar in and tighten her up and just true that flare up. Put a bit of joining compound on it. And she'll be just good. I've got a little horizontal piece coming off it. Got that. Go under there. I'll have my uh, check valve coming off along with an elbow. Like so. And that's the general idea of what I'm doing right now. Well, I managed to manipulate this fitting here to accept this size of pipe. Well, that's the only problem with uh, adapting refrigerant fittings to water fittings. Or LP gas, I think, in this case. The flare fitting. Normally, uh, I think this is a refrigerant fitting. And this is a uh, LP or water fitting. But I managed to flare it out a bit with a... Uh, Stop it attached to the end of a ratchet. Just wiggle it around until the copper bends to my will. And now I can solder it into place. I'm only using a lead and tin solder. I'm not going to use silver. Very low pressure application. There's no need for silver solder. Well, as they say, when in doubt, get the big shifter out. And make it tight. That's that one done. I'll find another fitting for the other end. Well, 
since I don't have the appropriate brass bushing to solder the pipe into for the outlet of the uh, check valve, I'm going to take one of these reducer bushings which I have plenty of. I'm going to bore these threads out until I can fit the pipe into it on the lathe. Cheapo tire when these fittings like these never really run true but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to machine it oversized so that I can move the pipe around and square it up while I'm soldering it. Give us a shot. Anyone who says he can't silver solder with map gas is lying. Unless of course you're trying to do something huge where the bulk of the material sucks the heat out. You can do beautiful silver soldering with map gas. Of course you get a lot of heat into the base metal though. That's the only downside. I'm going to be using uh, standard CIG silver solder flux and large silver solder rod all this stuff. That's about 60% silver. And sil soldering copper to iron comes out beautiful. Yep, that is one nice solder joint. We have to brief wash in the electrolysis tub to dissolve any flux. And a wire wheel. And that's about it. I haven't removed any metal. That's how a silver solder joint should look like. Not all lumpy and perforated with porosity. It's a shame it has to squ screw into this shitty Taiwanese plastic bushing. It's the only way I can reduce it, I don't, don't have a brass bushing that size. Well folks, this is a genuine Ed Systems discharge tube system. Complete with check valve and even an air bleed valve. It came from my old Mitsubishi 7.1 kilowatt condensing unit. Same one that cooled this workshop last summer. But that one had to be retired and parts of it still live on in my creations. This stuff here is about the same as the old white and red lead compounds. I actually used to have a container of the old lead stuff but I don't know where it went. Probably the better of the lot because this is uh, I think it's talc and linseed oil. Still works the same, but I prefer the old white lead. I know there's a container of it around here somewhere, but I don't know where it's gone. Well and truly obsolete and illegal now, but it works. <laughs> 